Hello and welcome to Cadwell Park for race number two. The weather is so much different to two weeks ago in Alton Park. Today has been glorious. It's been 30 degrees today, uh, which is a Thursday. Um, now it's around six in the evening, so it's just starting to cool off and the paddock's gone quiet. And then uh, tomorrow is Friday test day. It's gonna be in the 30s again. And Saturday is looking really nice. Just the smallest chance of a tiny little bit of rain, but nothing like what we could have had for Alton Park. So what we're gonna do is just see if we can take a look at our first kind of glimpse of the circuit. I've never been to Cadwell, so I'm excited to see what the circuit looks like. We can see the crest of mountain, and literally all I can see right now is, is road appearing from nowhere. So we're gonna be coming up over the hill there, along this short straight into whole bends. And all I can tell you right now is it looks an awful lot tighter than it looked in the simulator right <laughs> right now. What I can also see, if we look across, we can see the start finish straight, which is just running along the other side and then disappearing up under the bridge there to coppice, which is corner number one. So first glimpse of the circuit. Yeah, everything I kind of anticipated it would be. And it's so narrow. <laughs> Some Somehow Derek and I have uh, managed to black our way down onto the circuit. <laughs> so uh, we, we'll show you a bit as we walk around. Um, but here is Hall Benz. There's the DPR boys. This is Hall Benz exiting to Hairpin. So believe it or not, at the end of the road, as you can see, there's literally a 90 degree right-hander. And then this is the final corner, Barn tricky little corner and as you're going to see it's really important that you get on the power because this is going to lead into the main straight a really long straight so every mile an hour you can carry here is just going to multiply all the way down the straight and this is the start finish straight heading out of the last corner the pits there they're only used for i think possibly even just motorbikes a really small pit area if there's a red flag during the race, then they will bring the cars in there to hold until they're able to release and resume racing. So to get this close, it's absolutely amazing. These are the start lights. And we are literally right on the grid. There's big Derek surveying all that he knows. And this is looking back up the start finish straight up the grid, up under the bridge for the first corner coppice. One of the other unusual things with Cadwell Park is here's the start finish straight that we mentioned. Well, just the other side of this barrier is the return of the track. So just here, this side of the barrier, this is the not straight straight that leads from Mansfield and then into the real famous mountain section. So the turning point is gonna be here on the service road. Believe it or not, it's a third gear corner can be taken in second we'll see how we feel but probably third gear tight in it's quite a big hill Derek isn't it? <laughs> like a mini eau rouge Derek saying definitely avoid this the uh, second part of this curb at all costs that's the car breaker not quite sure if the camera's going to show just how steep this is now the 420s get all four wheels off the floor at the top of here. lunchtime here at Cadwell Park on Friday which is test day so I've had two sessions this morning two good sessions uh, I say good because I've never driven the track here before at Cadwell Park uh, I know that's amazing because uh, it's one of the very very best circuits in the UK for Caterham drivers so it's been a thrill to be able to drive it the only the only experience I've had before this is on the simulator where I put in plenty of laps in preparation and it really allowed me to get up onto a good pace. Within a few laps, I was on a good representative pace. What I thought I'd do is take a look around the paddock, 
show you some of the cars and I'd like to say thank you to one of my followers to Tempest who got in touch and said could you show us the design of some of the other cars in the paddock well Tempest absolutely what a great idea let's have a little walk around and see what we can see today it's a lovely color scheme of uh, Tom's car there he was race winner uh, he's got the white wheels to go with the white painted roll cage Simon's car there and then this is one of the prettiest cage rooms I've seen. Stu Hatzel's car with the offset twin stripes. Carl Webb, I think this is one of the most eye catching. This is Ryan's car. Black wheels and the green cage. And Hugo's very distinctive. Matt Gray. So here's an interesting car the car of James Walker. Big YouTube star and social media star. Mr. JWW racing here in the Caterham Academy this year. And Jack Woodgate's car. Jack actually works for Caterham and he's running in the white group. Here's a really lovely car. So it's got the mirror finish, third place finisher in the last race. So here's a close one for you. I went quick all day going through the second corner, Charlie. So I was trying some different things. Here you can see the error I've made. I've come off the throttle and what that does, it puts all the weight towards the front of the car. The rear of the car is then light and as I turn in, there's no grip on the back and I spin. Well done to Bruce for missing me. Uh, thank you for that. So what is important is you remain predictable in these situations. So hard on the brakes. I did forget to dip the clutch. So I had to restart the car. It's important to rejoin the circuit safely, making sure there's nothing coming up from behind. And what do us race drivers do after something like that? You get straight back into it. I was confident the car was fine. Back up to near on 100 mile an hour and into a tight right hand corner. So there's a test day at Cadwell Park done. In terms of improvement on time, just a couple of seconds between the first session and the last. And some people were saying that in general, the, the track degrades, it gets warmer, the car's power drops. So most people were, were matching their time. So perhaps I shouldn't feel too bad about it. In terms of overall pace, I think it's enough to get me in the mix again. Um, I reckon it'd be second half of the pack in qualifying and then uh, hopefully my race pace has seen me through so kind of that's where we're at for the day but it's still really warm really nice so what we're going to do is just watch uh, some of the other caterums uh, on their test sessions so i think we've got 270s oh no it's the 420s so this is the fastest class so 420s and the 310 rs going around so we'll take a look at some of that So we've got a couple of special guests just arrived. Anita and Abby, all the way, first race weekend. Good morning from the beautiful Cadwell Park circuit. Uh, today is race day, race number two for Rob Oldland. And I'm feeling nervous and anxious, but not so much so as Alton Park. Even though this circuit, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly daunting circuit. I must say one of the best circuits probably for any car but if you've got a Caterham and if you've not driven Cadwell Park like I'm ashamed to say was my case before yesterday's testing come to Cadwell Park it does not disappoint it's just terrific so racing at Cadwell can be tricky for a few reasons the track is very narrow it's used a lot for motorbike racing as well um, so yeah narrow track and then it's like a circuit of two halves there's one section of the circuit which is really open and quick less to hit and then there's another technical section where you're really close in the barriers are close it's twisty you've got this track of two halves the other thing as well is overnight we have had some thunder we've had some rain so uh, the track in some areas is going to remain damp for a little time now 
uh, we're first out qualifying today in green group and we're qualifying at 9.25. So that's a real consideration. Um, and right behind me is the tree section. Under the trees, the track could very well still be damp and slippy. Um, but we get to feel that in the first, even the out lap and the first couple of qualifying laps, just feel for, for the changes in, in track conditions versus yesterday. My wife, Anita, and my daughter, Abby, are coming along to watch the race. They've been blessed with just a small lie-in this morning. As, uh, as I mentioned, we're early qualifying, so we were at the circuit just after seven, uh, but they'll be here shortly. So look forward to them being along. It'll be the first time they've seen me race. This is John Bryan from Snappy Racers, and he's the official serious photographer for Caterham Motorsport. The pictures he produces are just incredible. Here's a few that he's taken from previous events. The trophies lined up here in the Caterham marquee to hand out over the race weekend for all of the different series. What I would give to get my hands on just one of these pieces of silverware, I'll be so proud and well done for those of you that took one away. So it's lunchtime here at Cadwell Park, a brilliant morning, great morning to qualifying. I've qualified 15th, uh, but that's a really good result for me. I achieved a time two seconds quicker than I managed yesterday in, uh, in testing. So I'm just thrilled with that. It puts me in the pack which is where I feel as though I'd kind of like to be and probably deserve to be. The guys up at the front end, well, they're really quick. So the times they've posted this morning, if in race uh, conditions, would be track records. The other great thing about today has been a number of people have come up to say, oh, Rob, hi, said hello, said thank you for doing the videos and enjoyed watching and kind of sharing the, uh, the story as it unfolds. So honestly, thank you so much for, for saying hi, having a few words, it just means so much. So honestly, thank you. And people for future events, please do exactly the same. That's exactly what we're doing this for. If we can just share that experience a little bit more, please come and say hi. I'll let you know exactly how, how it's going for the weekend, if it's good or if it's bad or if it's indifferent, I'll just tell you the truth and tell you as it is. So please do take that time, it's so much appreciated. As I was walking up to the paddock, the 310 hours just going out for their race. Graham McDonald, CEO there of Caterham Motorsport, followed by Johnny Jarrett, the MD for Oatmere. Good luck, Johnny. Good luck. About half an hour until the race, it was time for the final prep. Gary there taking care, making sure the windscreen's clear, wheels are talked up correctly. Get yourself into the car so you've got plenty of time. Been looking forward to this moment for a year now where Abby joins me on the back of the car and we're on our way down to the assembly area. So today let's take a real close look at how the race unfolded in Cadwell Park. So please join me and jump on board and you can see we've arrived at the grid the starter puts the red lights on and as soon as the red lights go out, we're away. I've made a really good start, plenty of traction off the line, starting to kind of find a gap and one opens up as we come into the first bend coppice. I managed to get around the outside of Ian Hapgood there and onto the park straight and everybody's through the first couple of corners and we've started to find our places in line. I can see Marcus Eels is in my mirrors, defending on the right hand side. I can see Marcus Eels closing in on me, but he's too far back to make a, a valid move. So I'm able to move across and take the line. Down into Gooseneck, I move to the left to defend the line. Don't get a very good drive out and Marcus, he's right on it again. He's picking up my slipstream and makes an excellent move into Mountain. So he's up alongside me this time. Give him a cos whip, he absolutely takes the spot. Really nice move, well done Marcus. And we're through hole bends for the first time. 
Maybe just a little dummy move on Marcus there to make him think I might try something, but no, he won't fall in for that one. On to the start finish straight. Sitting right behind Marcus, trying to pick up slipstream and close that gap up. There we go, just over 100 miles an hour as we turn into Turn 1 Coppice. And turning through Charlie's, that's where I had to spin yesterday. Up onto the park straight and at the 100 yard board, hitting the brakes to make the right hander using all of the track and perhaps a little bit more that I didn't pay for on the left hand side on exit. Now we're entering Gooseneck, a right hand followed by a left hander which sweeps downhill. And as I start to go down the hill into the braking zone, I can see there's been an accident in front. I see Bruce, I see Mika flying across, and Pete Mott there. Unfortunately, that was the end of the race for Mika and for Bruce. But for now, we carry on. So I've got Marcus Hills in front of me. And as you can see in the rear view mirror, there's very little behind. So we're making some progress. Whatever I do, I can't seem to find the pace to get back onto the back of Marcus and I see him breaking away. Back up through Coppice and into Charlie's. Back out onto the park straight. As you can see, the yellow flags are out and the safety car board is displaying. Mika and Bruce's car were in a real vulnerable position and couldn't be cleared easily. So the right thing to do is to deploy the safety car to recover them. Here we are, all stacked up behind the safety car, going through all bends. I can see that the lights have extinguished from the top of the safety car, indicating it's going to come in at the end of the lap. So getting ready to go as soon as Marcus hits the throttle to try and stay right on his tail. Nobody's allowed to overtake until the start finish line and the green flag. I managed to keep hold of the back of Marcus and I've managed to drop Ian Hapgood who was behind me. Back up to race pace, into Coppice and into Charlie's and out onto the park straight. Our boards hit the brake, turn in on the turning board, up into fourth gear and through Chris's. Next is Gooseneck, turning into the right hand side, hold the curb at the end of the curb, swinging left and 
downhill towards Mansfield. Change of tarmac's a great place to indicate where to brake and down into third gear for Mansfield. It's important to get a good run out of Mansfield because you've got the not so straight straight in the lead up to Mountain. Down to third gear, turn it into Mountain, pick up the left hand curb and then it's hard on the throttle and power up over the blind crest of Mountain. Now we're entering Hall Bends, find your turning in point, a right left, right left, and then a downshift to second for the really slow hairpin. Short shifting up into the final corner, barn. And then back on the power for the start and finish straight, up into fourth gear. Again, a slight lift for me, you can certainly take it flat. Seen a little bit of dust being picked up from Marcus there going through Charlie's, ran slightly wide along the park straight. Down into third for park. There's no kerb on the inside here of Chris's, uh, but what you can see is the grass has been worn. That represents the apex and something to aim at. Through Gooseneck. Change down from Mansfield. Now, I can see Ian Hapgood is now closing in on my tail. You can see him there in my mirror. Without a doubt, Ian is the faster driver around Cadwell, but can I defend this position fairly? So here we go, up through the mountain section. Through the mountain section, it's incredibly difficult for anybody to pass, so at the moment, Ian wasn't a threat through that section. tried to drop him on the main straight, the last thing I want is for Ian to be in my slipstream and just power past me. But we've made a big enough gap along the start finish straight. Up through turn one coppice and into Charlie's. I know I've got to get as good a drive out of here as possible and try to drop Ian from behind me. If he gets in my slipstream along the park straight, he's going to be able to make an easy pass. Moving across to the right to defend the line. The next corner is the right hand of Park. I want to make it uh, as tricky as possible for him to take that position from me. So giving him enough reason to just back out for the moment. He knows he's gonna have another opportunity. So we're through Park and into Chris's. And for the moment, I managed to fend off Ian. I'm doing enough now through Gooseneck just to make him think twice. Through the left-hander. Got enough gap to make it through Mansfield. Fully aware that Marcus had managed to put a good move on me earlier leading into Mountain, but I've got enough gap to keep him at bay just for now at least. We're back through the Mountain section. I can see he is right in my mirrors. So my focus here is to make sure I get a good drive out of the final corner barn to make sure I drop in along the start finish straight and prevent it from catching that slipstream and making an easy pass. So now again he's all over me as we go through coppice. I can see him in my mirrors all the way through Charlie's. much much closer this time he's going to be in my slipstream as we move on to the really long part straight 
this time I'm staying all the way over to the right. Not leaving the car's whip. If he's going to make a pass, he's going to have to go all around the outside, which he tries to do and outbreaks himself. So I live to fight at least a little bit longer. Through the gooseneck and down to Mansfield. And I can see I've managed to pull out a gap from Ian, but fully aware he's a faster driver and before you know it, he's gonna be back on my tail more than likely. Now, just making sure of mounting. Through hole bends. Still, I can see I've got a good gap from Ian behind me. Marcus is still in my sights ahead. So really learning from Alton Park where I lost focus mid-race, which resulted in losing places. I wasn't gonna make that mistake again. We're coming towards the end of the park straight. I can see Ian is back behind me. No immediate threat, but certainly conscious he's there. So we move through Chris's. Got myself a safe gap. So feeling confident, I'm gonna move into Gooseneck without any real threat. As we move down into Mansfield, I'm taking the left-hand line. If he's going round, he's going round a long way. And I do enough again to fend Ian off. Positioning my car in the middle of the straight. Again, if he's gonna go round me at Mountain, he's going round a long way. We're side by side as we come into Mountain, giving each other enough room. And I've done enough just to hold Ian off there. Us fighting has allowed Pete to close in and now Pete is chasing down both of us down through the hall bend section. Pete making an ambitious move up the inside on Ian results in both of them being off the circuit for a short time at least. I can see this in my mirror so all I need to do now is make certain of making the final corner barn. And here comes the checker flag and 10th place again. I am absolutely thrilled. Ian, that was a superb race. Thank you for a really clean, good fun race. And I'm sure you'll see us going wheel to wheel again as this season progresses. Giving the marshals a two and a wave as I make my way back to Park Ferme. There we go, what an epic race. Uh, Started 15th, finished 10th, another blistering start. Starts are obviously uh, kind of good for me, so a good start. Managed to find some space up into coppice and made up a couple of spaces at least. Then there was a collision in the safety car between Mika and Bruce. Um, nobody likes to see accidents like that, but uh, I've certainly seen Mika and I hear that Bruce is okay. So best wishes guys and uh, hopefully the cars are little more than getting the corners sorted. So. Best of best wishes with that. Good restart from the safety car. Um, didn't didn't make anything, didn't lose anything either. So kind of got on it, got on it early, managed to get a gap to Happy just behind me. And my word, me and Ian Hatworth, we had one hell of a ding dong for the rest of the race. Uh, in truth, Ian is faster around here than me, uh, but in a really fair way, I managed to defend my lines, uh, learning from Alton Park, not giving nothing away and held on to that 10th place spot. So there we go, race number two, 
10th place. Well done for getting 10th place. Well done, Bag, you're brilliant. Very proud of you. Love you. Love you.